What's going on everybody? Today I want to talk to you about a story that's pretty interesting back a while ago. So I had this buddy, he's not really my buddy anymore because you know God took out people that didn't really need to be in my life and kind of probably a good thing. But a while back I was hanging out with him and I was getting a, getting a ride from him to go somewhere and he goes oh we gotta stop at this house real quick so I said okay that's fine. So he goes we're gonna be there for a while though probably about an hour so I said okay. So we get to this house and we go inside and there's a huge party going on. There's people drinking, people doing lines of coke off a table, people shooting heroin in the bathroom, people having sex in the bedroom, like all this stuff is just going on. It's going crazy. So he takes me downstairs and takes me to the washroom and he's sitting there and he, he was selling Molly to somebody and I was I was with him. And he wanted to stay and hang out with a few people and see if you can make any more cells. And so I, I just did my own thing. I started walking around trying to see if I could start a conversation with anyone. And this, this guy in the corner, he was sitting in a chair and he was leaned over and he had his, had his hands in his face. And he was just supporting himself with his hands. Looked like he was about to pass out, leaning over in the chair. So I go over and I pull up a chair and I sit next to him and I start talking to him, ask him how he's doing. And, He's sitting there mumbling, trying to talk, but he's he's holding the conversation, so it warranted continuation. And eventually it got to a point where I asked him if I could pray for him. And when I asked him if I could pray for him, he looked he finally picked his head up and looked at me. And he smiled and said, Absolutely, yes. And I said, Well, what can I pray for you about? He said that he was having problems with his mom, his family's falling apart, and he's he's in a situation that's just really hurting him and bringing him down. So I sat there and I prayed with him and this this girl that was at the party, she she seen me praying for him and she seen me say in Jesus name and she came over there. She's like, oh, you guys are talking about Jesus, huh? And she started chanting F Jesus F, but she, she wasn't saying F, she was saying the word and a whole bunch of people came over and joined her. And before I knew it, I had about 15 people around me chanting this and I remember back in my days before I was a Christian, when I had a lot of demonic oppression going on, I used to think that Christians were a bunch of scumbags. So if, if this was two years before that, I would have been her. I would have been the one chanting that. Absolutely. Because the examples that Christian gave me all the time was hate, judgment, condemnation. So I, I was thinking about this and I started praying, Lord, what do you have for me to give to her? Give to me what you would have me give to her, please. And I was just praying the silence myself as everyone was sitting there chanting. And I got this, this thought about sleep paralysis just popped in my head. So I waited till everyone was done chanting and I looked at her and I said, do you have a problem with sleep paralysis? And she looked at me and she said, yeah, I do. And I said, well, what, what, what happens with that? And she said, well, at night she feels like she's getting choked and she goes through all the stress and anxiety and she wakes up and she feels like she can't move. And I told her, I said, I went through that too. And she, she sat down with me and she started talking, having a conversation with me. And I started telling her about what I experienced through sleep paralysis. And she was telling me what she experienced. And, you know, we found common ground, something we related on. We were talking about that. And I told her, I said, there's one thing that I did. They got rid of the sleep paralysis. I told her I went to the mental hospital. They gave me a bunch of drugs. It didn't help it. And I did all this stuff trying to get rid of it, trying to figure out <clears throat> what it is and how to get rid of it. I did so much study on it. I told her, I, I said, uh, you know, science can't prove that stress or they, they can't explain how when you go through sleep paralysis that you get the sensation of you're being choked because stress doesn't do that to you. And I told her, I said, there's one decision I made. And when I made that decision, I never had sleep paralysis again. But before I made that decision, I had sleep paralysis every single night for eight years. And she said, what was the choice that you made? I said, I accept Jesus. She didn't say nothing. She got quiet. She looked at me. And she decided, okay, let's change the subject. And she's like, Let, let's just go around the room and let, let's tell everyone what we love about each other. So, yeah. I was down with that. I didn't know anyone, but I told her, like, I, said, I asked her, can I start? And I said, yeah. And I told her that I love that she's open to listen and that she was able to come and have a conversation with me and that we found common ground. And I said, I loved her.
and then I could relate to her. And then she went and she said something about someone else and it was just fellowship started happening. The Holy Spirit was moving. There was an atmosphere of love. There was an atmosphere of change. And this guy that I originally started talking to, who was falling over in his chair about to pass out because he was on heroin, looked like he was sober now. Because this is interesting now. This is what I believe. And it's it's proven to be true over and over again because as soon as soon as you pray for someone or someone who is on drugs or drunk feels the power of God, they sober up. Right away, they sober up. And the reason for that is because drugs are a counterfeit for the presence of God. It's just the devil's counterfeit. When you when you do a drug, you feel that euphoric feeling, but it's it's a counterfeit of God's presence. And it doesn't do anything for you because when you come down from that high, all your problems are still there. But God's presence takes those problems away. So it's just the devil trying to counterfeit you, the presence of God, in a way that's going to kill you. Because feeling that presence of God is everything that we desire, everything that our soul goes after. And to be able to counterfeit that, that's why it's addicting. Because we should be addicted to the Holy Spirit. We should be addicted to Jesus. If we experience His presence, there's nothing better than it. And you no, know, I'm not. I'm not saying that His His presence gets you high. No, it's it's feeling His love, feeling His joy, everything we want. And drugs counterfeit that. It's not genuine love. It's not genuine joy. It's counterfeited. And it's just false emotions by chemical reactions in the brain, but it's different when it's through spirit. Now, I have this as a background, above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4, eight. Now, like I said, before I was a Christian, I would have been her. I would have been the one chanting that, because I hated Christians. I hated everything about them, because every single one I crossed paths with was a hypocrite. They didn't want to show me love. They wanted to tell me how it was wrong and how what I needed to do. And they didn't want to show me the goodness of God because they didn't know that the goodness of God is what leads you to repentance. They thought it was knowledge that led you to repentance. It's not the knowledge of God that leads you to repentance. It's actually God, His goodness, His love coming to you that leads you to repentance. And if you display His goodness, it covers a multitude of sins. It's just simple. That's what the verse says, so that's what it does. Now, I know a lot of Christians wouldn't go into a crack house, and they probably wouldn't minister in a crack house, because for some reason they think, oh, the sins on others is going to get on me, and if I go in there, I'm going to get a bunch of demons on me. Greater is he who is in you that is, than he who is in the world. Simply put, you know, God wants us to go to the places that others won't go to. He wants us to reach those that others think are hopeless, lost, and abandoned. But you see, when, when you go to do something like that, I'm going to urge you and tell you that you better make sure that you're being led by the Spirit. Because if you're led by the Spirit, you're going to have divine protection. Guaranteed. Where you go, God's going to protect you. Because if you're a Christian... Your father's breath made all the stars. So what do you have to fear? Absolutely nothing. If God says it, it has to be done. It's simple. You know, I just wanted to give a small testimony of how love is able to cover sins. You know, I, was, I was in a situation where someone didn't want to talk about Jesus, didn't want to hear about Jesus. They got everyone in the room chanting, F Jesus. And it started like that. And I could have, I could have taken a self righteous weight and said, "Oh, well, you're all sinners. You don't want this and all this stuff," like most Christians would do. But that's not the way of Christ. See, a lot of people that don't have Christ in their life, they use that phrase that Gandhi used: "I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are nothing like your Christ." So people test that. They test you. They test your fruits, even when they're not Christian. They test your fruits. Because they're looking for genuine. Show me something real, and I'll believe. But if you're sitting here saying, like, oh, well, I'm free, and I, I do this and this, and I believe in Jesus, and I'm free, and yet something that someone says against you triggers you and produces sin in you, why does sin against you produce sin in you if you're free? You're not free. 
because sin is being produced in you. If someone says something against you and you're going to get mad, God is not a reactive God. He doesn't react. He doesn't. Why would God need to react? He's, he's a proactive God. He doesn't react. He already has a plan. He already has a response. He doesn't react. He responds. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus responds. Because he already knows. So instead of reacting to a situation, respond to them. Instead of defending yourself, give the God solution. Like, I don't know. I know a lot of Christians that wouldn't wouldn't hold up in a situation like that where they were in a crack house and all of a sudden everyone's around them chanting that. But love, it ushers in the Holy Spirit and it changes the atmosphere. You have the power and authority to change an atmosphere and displace the kingdom of hell and bring the kingdom of God into everywhere you go. You can't tell me it's not true. Because I was in I was in a crack house full of people chanting F Jesus and showed them love, and all of a sudden they sit down, fellowship with me, and talk to each other about how much they love each other. You know, it's, my favorite verse to use for people who are addicted to drugs or potheads or something is 1 Corinthians 4.20. <laughs> you know? What, is, what does 1 Corinthians 4.20 say? For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's the power of God. So you, you can sit here and think you have the power of God just because you have all knowledge of Scripture. But if you don't have love, you have nothing. You can sit here and tell me the mysteries and explain God to me perfectly, but if you don't have love, you have nothing. Above all. What does above all mean? Above everything. All means all. I mean, we could do a word study on this and find out what all means, but I'm pretty sure we'll come to the conclusion that all means all. So above everything, including everything that's written, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. You guys, I would urge you, to renew your mind and not allow sin against you to produce sin in you. I love you guys. Jesus loves you more, though. Peace out.